to former Mayor Anise Parker and to Elise Lanier, um, to my own pastor, Raph, Dr. Raph D. West, and the other pastors and ministers who are present, to all of the dignitaries that are before us, the Comptroller Chris Brown, to the members of City Council that I'll have the privilege of working with over the next four years, and to all of you who are here uh, this morning, let me just say good morning to each and every one of you. Four years ago, four years ago, the focus was on shared sacrifice. The city was facing uh, some serious financial challenges requiring all of us to make tough decisions and institute major pension reforms, and we did. Four years ago, the unfunded pension liability was $8 billion. Today, it's a little more than $4 billion. We have balanced four. We have balanced four city budgets under the revenue cap, but not without sacrifices and unmet needs. In the solid waste department, our employees were driving trucks that were purchased in 2006 and were on the roads during Hurricane Ike, the Memorial and Tax Day floods and Harvey. Constantly being repaired, those trucks eventually said, we have had enough. Now, come March of this year, we will have replaced 50% of the entire frontline fleet. More people in our city are employed, working with labor and the business community associated with the city, janitors, security guards, and airport employees with the airlines are making more now than four years ago with my goal of getting them to $15 an hour. Four years ago, four years ago, the city's Higher Houston Youth Summer Pro Jobs Program was made available to 450 students. Four years later, 11,400 students, 16 to 24, were working. The goal, the goal this coming summer is 15,000 of our students working with job opportunities, with job opportunities for some students during the entire school year. The private sector, spearheaded by the Greater Houston Partnership, and the Workforce Commission were responsible for 11,000 of those jobs, and I want to thank them for partnering with the city. Four years ago, I said the city would access and address potholes by the next business day. Public Works has filled more than 250,000 potholes, and they have responded to your calls by the next business day 96% of the time. But in many cases, but in many cases, it's not just about potholes. The streets are in bad condition and need panel replacements or need to be totally repaved. I have instructed Public Works to present to me within 60 days a systematic plan that identifies those streets that need to be seriously rehabilitated, a potential funding source, and an estimated timeline for work to commence. You should see a noticeable improvement by the end of this term. In some cases, in some cases, the city is already partnering with Harris County Commissioners Jack Cagle, Rodney Ellis and then Adrian Garcia to repair city streets in their precincts. And I want to thank them personally for their cooperation. <laughs> the passage of Metro Next will also help us design and construct a city that is more pedestrian friendly and provide more transit options for people to move thoroughly throughout the city, throughout the entire metro region especially as our city densifies. The focus of our transportation tra transit network must be moving people safely and quicker on bus or light rail faster than they would move in their cars or trucks while they conduct their business on Wi-Fi, connecting them to major employment centers, airports, and other neighborhoods, transit-oriented development, and building more building major highways that mitigate the risk of flooding, minimize the adverse impact on historical neighborhoods, enhance parks and green spaces, connect rather than divide communities, and is transformational in its construction. 
While there are pending administrative and litigation issues, we are hopeful that construction of the high-speed train from Houston to Dallas in 90 minutes, traveling at 205 miles per hour, will start in the third quarter of this year, 2020. As the city densifies, those who are sleeping on our streets become even more noticeable. In conversation after conversation, people talk to me about the homeless problems. Pedestrians don't feel safe about walking to the bus stop. The homeowner is concerned about them sleeping close to their neighborhood. The business owner is worried about them driving away their customers. And then there are those who believe the city is not being compassionate enough. Since 2011, starting with Mayor Nice Parker's administration, the city has housed approximately 17,000 homeless persons working with our Homeless Coalition partners under the umbrella of the Way Home. Today, there are nearly 4,000 homeless persons living on our streets throughout the Houston region. They require more than just food and shelter. They need mental and behavioral health care, substance abuse treatment. They require housing with supportive and wraparound services. As the federal funding through the 1115 waiver is reduced, the burden on local governments is greater, and we must find ways to fill the gap. Though Houston is a model across the country on how to address homelessness, by Houston's standards, we must do more, and everyone must play a part. Over the next two years, starting today and ending on December 31st, 2021, I am asking the private sector, corporations, nonprofits, the philanthropic community, and individuals to contribute $50 million to the way home over and above your normal giving for supportive and wraparound services for the homeless. If we do this, you will see a noticeable difference on our streets. And at the same time, it will be the city's goal to reduce the homeless population to 3,500 or less by the end of the year and under 3,000 by December 2021. The Bible says in the 25th chapter of Matthew, then the king will come to those on his right. Come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. And I was in prison, and you came and visited me. Whether we are living in homes or on the streets, flooding has no respect of persons. We saw that with the tax day flood, Harvey, and Tropical Storm Imelda. That is why we are building a city that is stronger, more resilient, and more sustainable. We are doubling the number of stormwater projects in every city council district. Public Works is implementing our green infrastructure initiatives. Project Braves will be completed by the fourth quarter of 2021. We are providing more detention. Three of the four priority infrastructure projects have been approved by FEMA and fully funded and should be completed while I am in office. The Inwood Forest Detention will hold more water than the Astrodome. Kingwood Spillway Gates, there will be 10 of them. A North Canal stormwater project, which has been discussed since 1940, the largest stormwater project in the state of Texas, will be completed while I'm in office. We are working closely with the county on the 240 projects funded by the public approved bonds. And we are working closely with the county asking the state GLO to spend proportionately more of the 4.3 billion HUD infrastructure dollars in the geographical areas impacted by Harvey. To keep those projects on track as well as others, we are paying special attention to the city's permitting process, streamlining systems, outsourcing where needed, 
and using more app online applications. We are committed and are working diligently to repair and or rebuild people's homes damaged from Harvey as quickly as possible. To expedite the process, the city and the state GLO have entered into a collaborative agreement starting Monday, which we both hope will expedite the review and approval of people's files. I want their homes repaired or reconstructed, and I want their lives to be placed back in order. <laughs> Harvey shine even more light on communities and neighborhoods, which were already underfunded and under-resourced for decades. Many of the residents in these communities were already living on the margins. margins. However, Harvey pushed them down even further. Four years ago, I said I didn't want to be the mayor of two cities in one, a city of have and have nots. In the first term, we talked about building complete communities with the goal of making every neighborhood a neighborhood of hope, promise, and inspiration. For a community to thrive, you need housing, quality grocery stores, parks, green spaces that would accent any neighborhood in any part of town, good neighborhood schools, retail, financial and business opportunities, a safe and clean community free of illegal dumping. Ambitious? Yes. Can we transform every community at the same time? No. We started with five and now have 10. In Sunnyside, for example, we are taking those 300 contaminated acres from a landfill that have been there for a long time, and we are turning that into the largest urban solar farm in the United States. It will make a difference. We have signature parks, but we have 250 local neighborhood parks, which often do not get the attention they rightfully deserve. I've asked 50 businesses to partner with us to take on 50 local parks, and they have stepped up, and I want to thank them for that. The HEB. The H-E-B McGregor Market Store is already a game changer. But if we start and stop there, we will miss the mark. We need the same quality grocery stores in every quadrant of our city so that it can be a game changer in their neighborhoods. Affordable housing. We want people to be able to stay and live in their neighborhoods in the city and not feel compelled to go to the lands. We ask financial institutions, businesses, developers, nonprofits, endowments to leverage their resources with the city and with one another to share the risks and expedite the transformation. Though many have stepped forward to assist, we are still missing that level of support, the investments that will serve as game changers for those underserved communities in our city. I look forward to personally visiting with CEOs of corporations and banks to seek your participation in the Complete Communities Improvement Fund. How do we all benefit? A community made better produces a stronger, resilient, and more sustainable city. And though we have added 200 police officers over and above the number that existed four years ago, and we are committed to adding another 400 over the next four years, a, communi a community of hope and promise working with law enforcement produces a safer city and a city that inspires, especially for our children. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of speaking at a Boys to Men luncheon. I got there a little bit late. The program had already started. So instead of just walking to the front, I took a seat along the side of the banquet hall and waited for my turn for them to call me up. The kids, as I walked in with the mayor's detail, kept looking to see who was this person with all of these Secret Service agents walking inside the luncheon hall. And I don't know what possessed this 10-year-old black kid to get up from the middle of the luncheon room and walk all the way across the room and stood right in front of me while I was sitting in my seat. He looked at me, I looked at him. And finally I said to him, 
what's up? <laughs> and he asked me, he said, are you the mayor? I said, yeah, partner, I'm the mayor. What's up? <laughs> he said, I came over just to say hello. At that point, they started to introduce me. And I told the fella, look, I got to get up. It's my turn. So I stood up and I started walking towards the front of the stage. As I walked, this 10-year-old African-American kid started walking with me. And as I came up on the stairs, this kid walked up on the stairs with me. <laughs> I said to myself, let me see how this is going to play out. <laughs> and so I came behind the podium and I proceeded to speak. This 10-year-old kid was standing right by my side. I decided that I wasn't going to reduce or cut my time. And so I spoke to them for almost 24 minutes. This 10-year-old kid never left my side. At the end of my presentation, I said to those in the audience, please join with me in thanking my friend who stood by my side and gave me what I needed in order to make this presentation. Let me say to you this morning, just like that 10-year-old kid stood by my side, we in this city must stand by their side. It doesn't matter the ethnicity of this kid. It doesn't matter the language of this kid. It doesn't matter whether this kid was documented or undocumented. It doesn't matter the sexual orientation of this kid. These are our children, and we must stand by them. They're our children. And the reality is, but for the grace of God, I would not be standing before you today. Over the last couple of years, we have been working together to transform Houston into Silicon Bayou. We currently have over 20,000 students studying computer science within a four-mile radius of the ION, the old Sears building on South Main. We will create and attract high-paying tech jobs so that those 20,000 students can stay and work right here in their own communities in Houston. It makes no sense to graduate students from Texas Southern, University of Houston, Rice, and St. Thomas, and then they go someplace else to find high-tech jobs. In early 2018, Rice committed $100 million to build out the innovation hub for Houston, worthy of the fourth largest city in the United States. 12 months from now, the ION will open as a center for innovation, research, investment, and workforce development, and as the heart of a 16-acre innovation district. In 2019, Microsoft committed several million dollars to the development of smart cities technology for the city of Houston, and through its support of the ION Smart Cities Accelerator, this program will be launching 15 pilots with the city leveraging technology for everything from waste management, wastewater management, to traffic mitigations to student safety. Houston is making rapid progress to become the clean energy capital of the United States. And for the first time in the city's Houston, history, the first climate action plan will be presented this month. In 2020, the Texas Medical Center plans to break ground on its forthcoming 37 acres TMC3 research campus, ushering in a dynamic new era of collaborative healthcare research and leading the way for the region to continue to use to earn the moniker of the third coast for life sciences. TMC3 will break ground in April and will be the largest life sciences development project in the world.
we have begun to attract leading nationwide accelerators. Plug and Play has expanded from Silicon Valley to Silicon Bayou. Build.com has come from, build from Palo Alto to Houston, Texas. Generator has come from Wisconsin to Houston. Mass Challenge has come from Boston to Houston. IUPAD and Capital Factory and others have also expanded to Houston. 50 years ago, from Houston, we landed a man on the moon. Four years from now, from Houston, a woman shall take that walk. Last year, <laughs> last year, Travis Scott was nominated for a Grammy for his album Master World. It is my hope in Houston we can make Astro World 2, another major amusement park, come alive. Four years is not a long time, but I firmly believe that if we work together in the next four years, we can set the stage for this decade. I look forward to working with you over the next four years and with City Council including the record number of women who will be serving in leading positions. <laughs> when my parents moved to Houston, in 1954, they never imagined that their son, some 62 years later, would be sworn in as the 62nd mayor of the fourth largest city in the United States. As the poet wrote, I've dreamed many dreams that never came true. I've seen them vanish at dawn but I've realized enough of my dreams, thank God, to keep me dreaming right on. For as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. God, give us wisdom to direct our path and give us direction that we may together lead your city. God bless Houston, God bless America, and the best for Houston has yet to come.